morning. Um, so don't be shocked if you show up and it looks different than what you're used to in here. Uh, but today, we're gonna continue on with this series, Destination X, that we've been in. And we've really been talking about what it means to get to the place that, that God has for us. Jeremiah 29, 11, God says, I know the plans that I have for you. Uh, they're plans for good, to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future. And so uh, God has something in store for your life. God wants to do significant things in and through you. He wants to, 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 to impact you and to use you in incredible ways for his glory. But uh, as I've been saying uh, over and over throughout the series that there are so many followers of Christ that miss out on where God wants to take them because they're too distracted by everything that goes on around them. We get caught up in all of these things that uh, life tends to throw at us and they're not necessarily bad things. Oftentimes we kind of uh, depict this journey of following Jesus as there's really, really bad stuff and we've got a list of those things and then there's really, really good stuff and there's a list of those things and we just try to do more good things than we do bad things. But the reality of this journey is most of the things that keep us from where God wants us to be aren't the bad, evil, notorious things. They're the good things. They're some of the things that help our life a little bit, technology, and help give us uh, some relief from, from work and binge watching. So there's so many things. Listen, so many things. The list is too big of distractions that we face uh, in this life. And that's why one of the reasons over the 21 days to the kickoff of this year as a church, many of us are um, denying ourselves a distraction so that we can have a deeper experience with God, eliminating something intentionally from our lives so that we can focus that time that we would have spent on that with the things of God. And it's, it's been a, a great journey thus far. That time of denial will wrap up next, next Sunday. But my desire for you is to get to the place that God wants you to be. The reality is, and as a preacher, I'm supposed to tell the truth. The reality is there's many, many people that go to church. There's many, many people that are followers of Christ that will never experience what God wants them to experience. Doesn't mean that they won't get to heaven. Doesn't mean that they won't experience uh, the greatness of what eternity will be Eternity is secured by your faith in Jesus, period. You don't have to add anything to it. Faith in Jesus is what saves you, which forgives your sins, which makes sure that your eternity is secure. But there's this life that we live. There's the coming and the going. There's the working and the relationships and the fight. There's all of these things that we experience on this journey of life. Most followers of Christ, I know this is hard to hear, will not get to the place that God wants them to be on this journey of life because they're too distracted. And so the goal of this series has been to help you maybe identify and uh, eliminate some of these things that are keeping you from becoming who it is that God wants you to be. And so today we're going to continue on with this conversation and we're gonna talk about wisdom. I've been, been thinking a lot about this idea of wisdom. In fact, I kicked off this new year um, and the way that I'm approaching scripture this year is that I, I am reading one chapter of Proverbs every week. I'm focusing on that chapter. So I'm three chapters in now. I started chapter four this morning. And, and I am focusing in every day on reading that chapter of Psalms. And I'm memorizing one verse from that chapter. So by the end of the year, the goal is to have 52 Proverbs memorized. Uh, because Proverbs is a book about wisdom. And what I am discovering and what we're going to talk about and unpack a little bit more is that you have to have wisdom on this journey of life. Without wisdom, you will not get to the place that God wants you to be, or you will be delayed decades and decades along the journey. And it was several years ago that uh, I was at a New Year's Eve gathering, and my dad would host these gatherings on New Year's Eve as, a, as an alternative to what the world may offer on New Year's Eve. And I was reluctant to go spend New Year's Eve with my parents. <laughs> There's no way this is going to be fun. But to my shock, there were a couple hundred people that showed up to this thing. And there was a DJ and it was amazing and everybody had a blast. And then my dad shared a, a few words and they have resonated with me now for years and years. 
about two teachers in life, which he's gonna come up in a moment and share with us a little bit more about that, but two teachers in life, you either learn from wisdom or you learn from suffering, but you will learn. Wisdom is what we want, though. Proverbs tells us to seek after it like treasure. And so we're gonna break down wisdom, and I just did a little word study this week, and uh, actually, Dad, you can come, come join me. I won't delay it. Dr. Pickering, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, John. I know him as Dad. Thank you. Dad, how old are you now? Uh, 68. 68. Dad texts me the other day or calls me, and he's like, son, I'm gonna go get another PhD. <laughs> Clinical psychology? He just started, 68. Yeah, well, it's Listen, theology and psychology. It's theology a, it's a, and it's psychology. An degree, yeah. Something smart. So listen, you don't got any excuses. Young, old. Listen, you want to do something, go and do it. Well, I'm thinking the next 20, 25 years, son. I mean, you 20, know, the, for the next 20, 25 hey. years, you know, I, I need this to help for the next 20, 25 years. I love so I'm, it. I'm thinking longevity all the way. Great. Yeah. Well, so, so I did a little. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we're going to jump into some questions about about wisdom, but it, it was interesting. Dad, I shared this with you before we, we came out here. Mm -hmm. um, I did just a little word study on, on, uh, on words used in the scripture. Like how, how many times is, is wisdom talked about in scripture? Wisdom's talked about uh, uh, 218 times in scripture. Prayer is only discussed 121 times. Now, obviously, you, you see that we believe in the power of prayer, and prayer is significant, but on this journey of life, it's not that you discount one or the other, but mm -hmm. they work for some reason, there was a greater emphasis on wisdom throughout scripture because there is also a practical side, not just a supernatural side to our faith, there's a very practical side to, to living this life. Um, and, and another interesting correlation is that uh, joy is talked about the exact number of times that wisdom is talked about. You wanna experience joy in your life? I believe there's a correlation between experiencing joy mm -hmm. and wisdom. If you don't live a life with wisdom, if you don't make decisions in wisdom, you are not going to experience the joy that God wants you to experience. Mm -hmm. And so dad, let, let's jump into this for, for time's sake. Mm -hmm. um, just so we can have kind of a, a working start to this, uh, what is wisdom? Can you just define yeah. wisdom for us? Yeah, simply put, it's the ability to discern and make good judgment Good judgments based upon God's uh, God's will, upon God's law, God's righteousness, and that's basically what it is. So it's not just making good decisions; it's making good decisions because there's based there's upon, good decisions you can yeah. make in life according yeah. to the world's wisdom, which ultimately aren't going to get you uh -huh. where God ultimately wants you to be. Because we're talking yeah. about reaching the destination that God wants for us, not what the world wants for us, or even what we want necessarily mm -hmm. for ourselves. So it's wisdom making good judgments and based decisions on based truth. on God's truth. We're correct. That's, that's important for us to understand. And, and so how does wisdom keep us on point and help us eliminate the distractions? Because there's plenty of them around okay, us. Okay, so just to unpack a little bit of what you said earlier, um, we, uh, we have a choice here. And, and by the way, I wanna say that life will not go well for anyone without wisdom. Life will not go well. Life will be horrible, will absolutely be horrible without wisdom. So this is a very important thing. That's why the scripture mentions it so much. But we can go to wisdom, and if we go to wisdom, we immediately receive a blessing. You know, if we go to wisdom about our health, that starts tweaking our health, helping our health. Uh, if we go to wisdom with finances, if we go with wisdom about relationships, our marriage, we receive a blessing almost immediately from that. But if we reject wisdom, we, uh, we opt for foolishness. And foolishness then creates uh, suffering. Uh, we might not feel that immediately, but eventually the suffering starts showing up through this, uh, this uh, avenue of, of uh, foolishness. And if we stay in that foolishness long enough, we experience the consequences and some of these consequences will not be reversed. Now, suffering can then push us to wisdom, and then we can then move to blessing, but the problem is we waste 
a decade or two days, two decades with foolishness. There's a scripture in Ephesians 5, 15, 16. It says, therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of your time because the days are evil. Our lives could be gobbled up with foolishness. And, uh, and so we waste a lot of time. So it's imperative for us to you know, really give attention to, to wisdom in order to have this maximized life you were talking about. Yeah. Now, there's two professors in life. This is what, in the university of life, there's two professors. One is Professor Wisdom, and he's the best professor you could ever sit under. But the other professor is Professor Suffering, and he is a tough, tough teacher. It'd be better to get this first professor versus that second one. That's great. But they both will teach. So, so in our conversation leading up to this, uh, I'm aware now that there are, there are really three facets of uh -huh. wisdom. And so it's not just understanding one of those, right. it's all three because they all play mm -hmm. a part in this journey of our, our life. And so can you kind of break down for us the, the three facets mm -hmm. of, of wisdom? Well, all right. So we'll just put wisdom here. And the three facets uh, are in, well, there's three, yeah, one, two, three. Um, the first one, specific knowledge. Specific knowledge, and I'll mention more about this in just seconds here. The second is common sense. And then the third is uh, streetwise, being streetwise, living east of Eden. So with specific knowledge, let me, let me give you an example. Um, a guy keels over on the streets in the city, right? Bubba comes by and Bubba says, oh, just kick the guy three times, throw some water in his face, he'll be okay. Another fellow says, no, we, we, he's having a cardiac arrest. We have to do CPR right now. Who is the one who has wisdom in that moment? It is the one with knowledge, the doctor who has the knowledge to deal with the situation. There's many situations that we're going to encounter. We need specific knowledge in order to solve these, or we can just uh, default to foolishness, to try to solve things through foolishness. So specific knowledge is a part of wisdom. The second is common sense. Uh, there's a, the CEV uh, version puts a, a lot of emphasis on this idea of common sense in its translation. For instance, in Proverbs 2, 2 and 3, it says, keep in tune with wisdom and think what it means to have common sense. Beg as loud as you can for common sense. Another scripture, my child, listen closely to my teachings and learn common sense. So, uh, you know, uh, the, the ninth president, let me give you an example. The ninth president of the United States, a guy named Harrison, right? Uh, he, uh, William Harrison, his inaugural was on the coldest day ever recorded up to that point in Washington. And uh, his advisor said, Mr. President, how about if we have the inaugural inside this year? And he didn't want anything to do that. So, no, nope, it's going to be outside. Then they said, well, Mr. President, could uh, you possibly make it a short inaugural address? Harrison gave the longest inaugural address ever delivered in presidential history. He immediately caught pneumonia, and 31 days later, he died all because he was unwilling to follow common sense. We will suffer if we ignore any one of these avenues. And then the third is streetwise. Um, I had a, a guy I uh, counseled, he was a sociology professor, and him and his friend were trying to sell a computer on eBay or something, and uh, uh, they were contacted by a fellow who said, okay, I, I really want to get this computer for my wife for Christmas. It was Christmas Eve. And uh, so meet me at about 11.45 p.m. in this not so good neighborhood, this kind of high crime. And, and so they met him. The guy kind of him hauled about, uh, about a bit, grabbed the computer, and then ran with the computer. The sociology professor ch chased him through some uh, apartment complexes, and the guy stopped, pulled out a gun, and said, if you come any closer, I'm going to kill you right now. Well, the sociology professor stopped, and then he, I tailed out there, which, you know, uh, it, the streetwise finally kicked in on with him, you know, at that point. But, you know, how many of us would do that, you know? How many of us would, you know, 11.45 at night, uh, you know, fall into this kind of uh, situation? Look, we live east of Eden. It is a dangerous place, and you better have wisdom 
streetwise in order to deal with life east of Eden. So these are the three components. And there's many, many scriptures that back all these up. I go into great detail in my, my book on chasing That's wisdom, great. stumbling over foolishness. Yeah, by the way, the, the book is available for purchase after because we're obviously not going to be able to, to uh, dive into everything oh, yeah. today. Mm -hmm. um, but two decades of, two of decades work of study and study and, work, yeah, and to, research to put this. in to this, mm -hmm. this book. And so there's a lot in there that I would encourage you to, to read and, and, and work through. Um, so, so one of the other questions I want to ask, how can we specifically uh, keep wisdom at the forefront uh, to help, um, help us avoid or keep us from getting distracted? Very, very good question, Landon. I'm going to share with you three quick points on this one. All right. The first one is there has to be an acute awareness an acute awareness of this dichotomy. I call it the wisdom foolish dichotomy. Uh, wisdom, foolishness. And everything out there, X, Y, Z, you are going to either use wisdom with it or foolishness, no matter how trivial or small it is or no matter how big it is. And so if you go with wisdom, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn out pretty good. If you go with foolishness, it's going to result in something not so good. The outcomes are better if we go with wisdom for everything. For instance, I'll give you a little simple example. I took aspirin a, little, a while back, right? And I, I shouldn't be taking aspirin, you know, not at 68 years old, but I wanted to try to see if I could kill a headache real quick. And, and you know, uh, but I took it and it kind of messed my stomach up. And what was that? A little thing, but you know what? It's foolish. I said, that was foolish. And then the, uh, the other day, I'm kind of uh, walking through our house. That it's dark, you know, and I, I, I didn't turn a light on. And then I, a door was open. Boom, I hit the, hit the door. Uh, I, now, I don't want I you hope, to get the impression I'm clumsy. My, I'm not. But. I, I hope that my, my analogies of wisdom and foolishness, somehow I get there spiritually where I'm, my, the worst decision that I'm making is aspirin or not aspirin. Right, yeah. <laughs> Turning on the lights or not. <laughs> It gets, it gets bigger than that, of course. You know, should I send this text? Should I not send the text? Should I connect with this person? Should I not connect with this person? Should I drink this stuff? Or should I not drink this stuff? So this is the wisdom foolish dichotomy. It is in the presence of all of us all the time. And so you have to be aware of that. Do you believe scripturally, right? Scripture will say that, that a person won't be tempted beyond what they can handle, right? And so I think sometimes people figure they can test the boundaries, they can test the limits, like God's not going to give them more than they can handle. Or, but so much of our pain is found in our foolishness. God's not going to protect you in your foolishness. And so, so that's where wisdom is so crucial. If you made a bad decision, it doesn't mean that God doesn't love you, but you, there's still the consequences of that decision based on your choice. Yeah, I counseled a guy last night. He's coming out of alcohol. He's had a horrible history of alcohol. And uh, I told him last night, I gave him a wisdom. I said, you follow this wisdom. When you feel, and I gave him several other points here, but one of the things I share with him, I said, if you will just wait five to 15 minutes the storm will hit you. The wind will hit you. Just wait five to 15 minutes. The temptation will pass over you. Now, there were other bits of wisdom for him, but that was one thing you had mentioned, you know, that you know, if a man's tempted, you know, that you know, God will give him the ability to overcome that. But it's a wisdom thing yeah. that gives us the hedge over, uh, over temptation. So now you would asked about how, um, how we get this uh, wisdom, how we, can we keep it at the forefront. Let me, yeah. let me share a quick second point. Uh, you know, God uh, will give us wisdom if we will simply ask him. I've tested this thing out. I've tested it out dozens and dozens and dozens of times. Uh, there's a couple scriptures about this. For instance, uh, James 1, verse 5, I'll just quote it. It says, that if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God, and he will give it to him without reproach. God will give you the wisdom. Even if you've been foolish in the past, uh, God's still going to give you the wisdom. He's for you. He's not against you. Sure. He wants to give you what you, you need. And then I ran into this passage in Isaiah 
chapter uh, 30, verse 21, which is absolutely incredible. And it fits what James 1, 5 is saying. It says, listen, listen to this. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. And I think that's wisdom. You will always hear the voice of wisdom if you ask for it. If you're trying to make a decision, it's going to be a wisdom foolish dichotomy thing. And if you ask God, God will give you the wisdom in order to make the right, dis- make the right decision. So let me, let me give you an example. Uh, when you were in your earlier years, uh, my wife um, bought a big dog called Arnold, right? He was a cross between a Great Dane and I think a German Shepherd, but, or Golden Retriever. Uh, no, I don't know what it was, but it was a cross. <laughs> It's a very big dog. Named after Arnold what? Schwarzenegger. Right. Okay. Yes. I can never get there that There were two name dogs right. in the, there was the big dog they named Arnold and then the runt of the litter they named Danny yeah. um, off of the movie Twins. And my mom brings this massive dog. Actually, I went with her. I remember oh, that did. day. I, yes. Okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> you learn things on stage, right? So we didn't know that Arnold was a serial cat killer. And dead cats showed up on our back porch all the time. I remember one time when our little, my beautiful little daughter, Victoria, walks out and there's this crazy scream and there's a dead cat laying right there on the, on the steps. And, it's quite the entertainment uh, on the way to school that morning. Yeah. But we, you know. But uh, we didn't just let him roam the no, neighborhood no, free. No. We had a fence. The dog could literally jump over the six foot fence. He would jump up, put his paws on the top and pull himself over. And then it was a free for all on every cat in the neighborhood. There was no stopping him. I mean, we would throw stuff at him. We would kick him and he would just wag his tail and go after the next cat. Yeah. So I came, I came home and no, we didn't kick him. I mean, don't call like the animal people. Of course we didn't. (laughs) I came home, the kids greeted me at the door and they said, dad, dad, Arnold killed another cat. He killed the neighbor's cat behind us. I went, oh crap. You know, I saw a lawsuit, you know, that's what I saw, a lawsuit. So um, uh, there was a police and they said the police are right in front of their house. So, you know, they were, they were working on some kind of, uh, you know, legal uh, action. And so uh, this I wasn't went to the backyard. Cat. This was like a 20 year old cat. Beautiful cat, Siamese decoy. Like, yeah, it was yeah. not a good situation. So I, I, I went in my backyard and I was going to go through our back gate to their um, property. And um, I just prayed to God. And I said, God, um, right now, I need wisdom here. Give me wisdom to handle the situation. And you know what? It came. And the wisdom was, go quickly to your opponent at law, potential opponent at law, and make amends or whatever. And so I obeyed that voice. I went to her, knocked on the door. They were crying. They were in utter sorrow. And the police had already left. And um, the, I said, I, we, I, we're deeply sorrowful. We, we're sad. We're, Arnold, we're going to get rid of our dog. He will be gone within a week and I will buy you a brand new cat. And she said, I don't want another cat, I want my, and so, you know, there was some more conversation that went on, but nothing came of it. So I think that was wisdom for that moment. And so, look, ask, try it out, test it out. Ask God for wisdom with everything, and that wisdom is gonna come to you. You will be surprised how it comes to you, and it will be crystal clear. The problem is your willingness to follow that wisdom. That's the big one. Are we really, 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 really willing to follow wisdom? You know, a lot of times we opt out of wisdom. We go, no, I'm going to go with foolishness. So just one more thing, all right, how we can keep wisdom at the forefront. Uh, I, uh, you know, with you guys, when you were going to school, remember, I used to have a proverb uh, every day. We'd drive to school, and I would have a proverb for you on a card and everything, and I'd try to get you guys to memorize uh, those, those proverbs along with vocabulary words. And uh, so we, we got to keep Proverbs in front. In front. So I'm, I'm a 20th century guy. I use index cards, right? I know many of you 21st century, you want to use the phone and everything else. Go 20th century on this one, okay? Get some index cards. Write a proverb a day. 
Dwell on that proverb the whole entire day until you memorize it. It will become a part of your thinking. Uh, So there's a very important point to be made here. In the, especially for young people, the prefrontal cortex is not fully formed. And the prefrontal cortex is the administrative part of your brain. It is not fully formed until the early 20s to mid 20s. Can you believe that? And decisions are made out of this. So what is critical is that you inculcate wisdom into the prefrontal cortex. Inculcate Proverbs. Get your kids to memorize Proverbs. You memorize Proverbs. Uh, And even in Israel, the the Jewish youth all memorized the book of Proverbs. That's incredible. So we have to load up in our prefrontal cortex uh, these ideas of wisdom so that we can can reference them. And so uh, it, it could be Proverbs and also bits of wisdom. So for the last several months, I've been dwelling on this one. Uh, before you speak, this is wisdom. It's been given to me. So I wrote it down and then I've been dwelling on this, trying to integrate that into my thinking. Before you speak, think. T, is it true? H, is it helpful? I, is it inspiring or interesting? N, is it necessary? K, is it kind? And that wisdom has been serving me really, really good. That's but great. you've got to get specific with this, okay? That's great. Thank you, Dan. I'm, I'm going to call the band up as we, we get ready to close out our, our time together. And again, I wish we could sit mm-hmm. and talk about oh, this yeah. um, for, for hours on end because I think it's so helpful. I think what you were just diagramming out about the, the prefrontal cortex you know, at the beginning of this series, I talked about the, the necessity of scripture mm-hmm. in our life. And so um, wisdom has to be coupled with, as you said at the beginning, the ideas and thoughts uh-huh. uh, of God. And so when you're seeking this wisdom, if you also haven't put the thoughts of God into your mind, you're not gonna have a database mm-hmm. to, to pull mm-hmm. from. And, you know, we, we joke around with my, my, my dad a lot about the <laughs> Proverbs a day going to school and, you know, in middle school, you know, uh, hopefully some of it stuck, but but the vocabulary words definitely didn't. They did with my friend who scored perfect on the SATs and that section of the thing. I did not. Um, but, you know, I, I've, I've begun to do that with my own son. And it's been just amazing to me. Though Nixon, he, he is... Um, Irrational. He's a two-year-old, right? He, he he doesn't make the best decisions, you know, based on his age. But he has memorized two proverbs in the last three weeks. And um, the point isn't just to like, like, emphasize scripture on him or to be the the preacher dad that's trying to you know shove the Bible down. Is I'm guiding him. I want the thoughts of God to be in his, his mind and in his heart because once they get here and they get permeated into us, then we just have this bank of, of, of God's thoughts to pull upon. And, and so if you could share, is there anything else that you'd like to share yes. as we, we, we wrap you, up um, yeah. just in regards uh, to wisdom, just because I think this is such a crucial thing for us to really think about and ponder. I think I used to say to you guys, a proverb of day keeps foolishness away. That's a good slogan, right? No, there you is. said a proverb a day keeps the devil away. Yeah, that all right. Is, all right. <laughs> that is what you said. Well, you can use either word, devil, foolishness, whatever. Okay. By the way, the cat story, there was wisdom and divine intervention because they lived behind us and the officer told them uh, that we lived in a different zip code and so it was out of his jurisdiction, jurisdiction. and yeah. he left. So. <laughs> That's right. Sometimes you need divine intervention along with the wisdom. (laughs) One last thing, okay, just one last thing. The Bible talks about being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, In the world, we uh, get these negative constructs going. And a lot of them, these constructs are, they're all composed of ideas, foolish ideas, uh, beliefs that we form, foolish beliefs. uh, uh, And all on brain cells, and then experiences, foolish experiences that we have that load up into um, these uh, neuro uh, uh, networks within our brain. And, uh, and you can identify what they are. I mean, foolishness with you know, our, our language, foolishness with um, uh, substance abuse, foolishness in relationships, whatever they might be. We have to identify these, but what we have to get on with is the building of new cognitive constructs, positive cognitive constructs based on new ideas of wisdom, beliefs about wisdom, and new experiences 
with wisdom. And before you know it, we form new constructs. And we really, literally got to build uh, dozens and dozens of these new constructs within our brain until we reach what's called a cognitive tipping point and we start functioning out of the new construct of wisdom, not out of this foolish construct, but we've got to do that work. That's what Romans 12, one and two is about. That's great. Well, thank you, Dad, so much. Uh -huh. And again, if you want the book, you can pick that up. Uh -huh. And uh, thank you, as always, yeah. for, for being with us. Would you, just, would you just pray for us? Yeah, I uh, will. As we close out. Okay, so Father, without exception, without exception, may every single person here accumulate great wisdom as they continue the journey and find themselves blessed like they've never been before. Do your favor upon your people here in the name of the greatest life ever lived, the one who delivered wisdom to us unlike any other. In his name we pray, amen.